It's time to harvest your crop. You see, ghosts take the numbers of any stack they've killed. And since peasants have a single hit point, you can sit back no! and watch your number swell. How's it going people? Jack here with another video. So today we'll be riding further on that train of Heroes of Might and Magic with the second entry and its review from Sav Zintaj. And you you know what? This <laughs> this game is something else. I don't think that Might and Magic, well, which is another spin-off to this, and I think the first one that actually ties in to the Might and Magic, which is like the 3D version so to speak of it which i know seth also has reviews of might and magic yeah i have had recommendations to watch those will come in its due time but uh just the sheer will that you need to have to see through those is like God, I... and it's not a bad thing because you can basically complete these games within like two or even an hour if you can manage your resources correctly but boy oh boy it's one of those that are just kind of uh, freaky but let me not ramble too much let's jump into this review hey hey people seth here today <laughs> i'll be playing the predecessor to one of the best turn-based strategy games of all time a game where combat is decided by whoever gets to move first victory is decided by who gets the most broken spells and where the best <sighs> day of the week is monday i'm speaking of course <laughs> about heroes of might and magic 2 but really it should just be called heroes of magic and sometimes might if you're very <laughs> unlucky i play this first as a child and now I return to it as a man child released in 1996 <laughs> by New World Computing we're going to be looking at this game as the original building blocks for Heroes Free which that is an, a very good quote, returning to things as a man-child. Yeah, one does feel like that once in a full moon when you want to just return to that one classic that you've always loved got everything right. In contrast, Heroes 2 gets everything wrong, but it's got a lot of soul, it's very pretty, and it's yeah. generally a very relaxing experience. First, let's cover the lore. The story takes place after the dominant monarchy has a little disagreement. <laughs> Roland Ironfist and is Archibald. the rightful successor to the throne, but Archibald Ironfist has had enough of his faggot brother, so he accuses him of soiling the bed and forces him to flee the kingdom in embarrassment. In the camp this game takes you out on a loop because there are these um well what's the word for it again oh yeah it's like a term that i usually just keep to world of warcraft because that's kind of where it was played the most during one of the expansions but scenarios uh, that you have to go through where you can choose when or not to, st to stick with certain allegiances and even uh, betray others so you can either help roland or betray him later on into the game campaign you can choose to either stand with Roland Ironfist and defend his right to shit the bed or choose to represent Archibald in his rightful condemnation of his brother's scatological tendencies canonically <laughs> Roland wins and turns his brother to stone which is used as a plot yeah, point in there the we RPG go. games since Might and magic. Archibald is the only person who understands <laughs> nuclear physics I'm not joking I'm completely it's true sick. it's literally true <laughs> Might and Magic is crazy. It's like somebody was sitting there playing D&D &D and was like, so, um, have you heard of StarCraft? <laughs> He's so stupid. You need to free him in Might and Magic 6 unless you want the planet to explode in a thermonuclear blast. The Archibald campaign is pretty challenging. The Roland campaign is a billion times worse. There's only one way to win. It's a complex strategy that I like to call restarting the mission until you get lucky and get a spell that lets you no clip across the map. I think that statement alone should give you a hint of what Heroes oh, 2 man, the Black is all Dragon. about. I got the good old games copy, which emulates a game to run on Windows 10. There are some glitches, but these can all be fixed by playing around with the configuration. Generally, everything looks, plays, and sounds great. This was the first Might and Magic game where they went all out with their sound design. And look at that sprite art. It's so cool. The one thing that is to be hated with the sprite art is some of those character portraits. Yikes, dude. Like, Might and Magic 3, uh, Again, the, the game that we watched last time. I went back and actually looked at that. It's actually pretty good. 
uh, the the art style especially like people actually do look like people <laughs> but here like you have like random units who look like straight up demons Everything is beautifully composed, and I should mention, every single town theme is sung by a fucking professional opera singer. Uh -huh. Have a listen. <laughs> no. I remember this. Values in this game are absolutely top notch. Just look at how insanely pretty everything is. Every single unit, every single set piece, even the resources you pick up, gemstones, crystal, treasure chests, they're all still crispy clean to this very day. To yeah. illustrate my point, here's a basic unit dwelling for the <laughs> Knight faction. It's a structure responsible for spawning the most useless unit in the game, the peasant, and it still looks better than any place I've ever lived in. <laughs> Hold on. By the way, you know the Seth is Danish for one one single purpose. Let's go to those frames again. Better than any this and also the mattress. This is a one one and a half size bed. I have this exact same bed right outside there. Not the one behind me, but another one. We have a, a couple of beds. <laughs> and the salt. The salt. Dude! Now, I'm not saying that Salina Salt is exclusively found in Denmark, because I've seen it plenty of places, especially in Southern Europe. But, <laughs> with the fine right here, it's the cheapest salt that you can get in stores. <laughs> My man! ...ever lived in. This detached two-bedroom cottage probably cost more than the student loans of several millennials combined. They told me medieval peasants had it bad. I'm sorry, how can they have it bad when they've clearly got a front garden and supposedly a clean source of drinking water? There's a very saturated, high contrast color palette in this game. And as a kid, I took all that quality for granted because the modern heroes games now look like someone's <laughs> shitty deviant art page. I'm going on tangents now, which is a growing symptom of my impending dementia. So, let's get to the gameplay. Here Gothic may be a developing game, but it's rich in culture. Get me out of this godforsaken hellhole. <laughs> ever since my brother and parents... <laughs> ever since my parents and three brothers died in a gasoline explosion last month, my mind has been dead. Okay, Jesus Christ, going the extra miles with these edits, huh? So, let's get to the <laughs> gameplay. Heroes 2 is a turn-based strategy game, which means it's for thinking people, and people who are too slow to play StarCraft instead. The principle <laughs> is very simple. You recruit <laughs> heroes to lead your armies. These all have different stats and skills respective to their faction. The sure. portraits for heroes are an absolute acid trip. I There's know. There's almost no way to tell what class they are until you mouse over them. Let's take this guy, for example. Can you guess what he is? Yeah, he's yeah, a that's knight. Right. He's a knight, which means I, he's a no. good guy. And on Roland's side. Okay, let, let, let's let's try that again. Can you guess what this guy does? It's a yeah, wizard. Correct. He's, he's also a in wizard. Mighty which magic tree. He's also a good guy on Roland's side. You know, I'm really starting to doubt Roland's motives. Half of his. <laughs> this is why you betray Roland. Simply for the sake of aesthetics. It doesn't matter. He he has the opportunity. During one of his quests, you can play and or go and save your crazy Uncle Ivan. Crazy Uncle Ivan may not be that crazy after all. I bet I betrayed Roland as soon as I could, okay? Team look like they've just come out from serving prison sentences for aggravated rape. But who am I to question royalty? A lot of the sorceresses make for great waifu material though. Ah, the 90s. Back before women became degenerate and started plastering their faces with septum piercings. Oh wait, uh. oh no. You recruit armies by spending all your <laughs> yeah. savings on dwellings that spit out new units at the start of each week. You also have 
have to pay them up front. Each of the six factions has its own respective six unit army, which range in tiers from level one to level six. six. However, your heroes can only hold five different stacks, so you'll have to pick and choose or mix and match to suit your strategy. <laughs> Wizards are all about range. They've got three different shooters. Warlocks answer that by having three different flyers that can close the gap. Knights have no flyers, neither do the barbarians. Instead, the knights prefer to tank all the damage, while barbarians lack any kind of defense and rely on hitting fast and hitting hard. A sorceress is a mix of everything. A necromancer is a mix of everything undead. <laughs> they get their ultimate unit quicker and cheaper yep. than anyone else. And, and this is why Heroes of Might and Magic has an all other game that are adjacent to this make necromancers as OP as possible. It's the only right choice. Of course, also, if you are a mighty sorcerer, you, you can, but necromancers, come on. It's GG. Our liches are the only unit in the game which can accidentally wipe out half of your own army. <laughs> You've got a limited set of moves and actions you can take every turn. Once you're done with your turn, the computer moves around and pretends to be intelligent. Rinse and repeat. Research new spells, upgrade your dwellings, get higher level troops which aren't worth the money, and crush your enemies. It's all very simple. What's not mm -hmm. simple is figuring out which factions aren't complete garbage. So, to save you the time, I've made a very easy chart. As you can see, of the six different towns you can choose, five of them are objectively hot garbage. That's because warlocks have the best unit in the game. Dragon. Dragons. Some might argue that different factions have their own strengths and shine at different points in the game. Knights and barbarians in the early game, necromancers and sorceresses in the mid game, and mm -hmm. warlocks and wizards in the late game. We call these people a heroes to apologist. <laughs> they are some Aversive, they are insidious, and they are fully convinced that a tier 6 unit with one quarter of the health and none of the perks of a dragon <laughs> is a good financial okay. investment. Also, okay. they can't do this. If such a person approaches you, don't listen to their lies. Unplug their hearing aid and jam their mobility scooter immediately <laughs> before they manage to convince anyone else at the retirement home. In Heroes <laughs> 2, magic is king. Ma Yo, if I ever see some grandpa or old hag <laughs> i'm sorry that that's kind of rude um playing my magic at a retirement home because like I, I usually take like um public transport because uh, i like it i like it but um if if i'm not biking though which is the shit that our generation should be doing man that would be good that would be so much fucking fun man that's, that's how that's how you want to retire. Magic is essential for victory and completely overshadows anything an illiterate, brain-dead warrior can hope to achieve. Why? Because there's no counterplay. All a mage has to do is keep repeatedly suicide bombing his enemies to victory. What is the answer to someone rushing at you repeatedly with phoenixes and spamming Armageddon? Losing. <laughs> that's what. To beat magic, you have to counter magic with more magic. Armageddon yep. spam can't hold up to a wizard with more spell points than white matter in his brain, who can just cross the entire length of the map with Dimension Door and take all of your towns in a single turn. Heroes 2 is a mess, but it's a beautiful, exploitable mess. In all due fairness, the idea of the game is that you're not meant to stick to a starting faction no. and instead ramp your way up to getting the town you want, which is warlocks. If you can't get warlocks, eh, settle for wizards. Titans can still hold up to dragons, and boars make for a good source of fresh pork, I guess. If you can't mm. get wizards, settle for uninstalling the game. <laughs> also, it should be mentioned that while everything works great on my good old games copy, the sound clip used for teleportation has been completely scuffed. How? Why? I don't know. But I think we should all experience it together. Uh-oh. I know teleportation has its risks, but I never expected it to blow my eardrums. So if you have to teleport, please remove your headphones beforehand, or you're definitely going to develop tinnitus. So Yo, do <laughs> Apple is missing out on an on an amazing product.
Since we're on the subject of bullshit strategies, we might as well also cover bullshit units. Luckily, the developers had the foresight to realize that some of these might be a little too strong, so they're not available to any faction. Instead, they can only be <laughs> obtained in limited numbers through diplomacy and bribery. Case Is example so? one, genies. These can only be found in magic lamps. They're very pretty. They also hit like a truck, but what my former child brain couldn't understand is that they've got a special ability. They can divide any stack in two, and it doesn't matter how many genies there are. One is enough. So, split them up into stacks and go ham on your enemy's strongest unit. Hit a stack, get lucky, and your enemies just lost several weeks worth of income. And if you're playing multiplayer, you've just lost several years mm -hmm. worth of friendship. Case example two, ghosts. Remember how I mentioned peasants were completely useless? That's uh -huh. not entirely true. If you can somehow convince a couple of ghosts to join you, stop whatever it is you're doing and locate a small horde of peasants. Don't kill them. Let them grow. Let them ferment and let their population explode over the next few weeks. Then it's time to harvest your crop. You see, ghosts take the numbers of any stack they've killed. And since peasants have a single hit point, you can sit back and no. watch your numbers swell. No way. I didn't know that was a tact. Man, okay. This entire these reviews have been ruining my childhood. <laughs> Like in a good way, in a good way. From several dozen to several hundred to several thousand. In a single fight, you've turned a mediocre stack of units into the single most powerful unit in the entire game. At this Yikes. point, nothing and no one can stop you. Your legion of ghosts will keep growing and growing until there's nothing left to consume. Their numbers will swell so high that the game just gives up trying to show you how many there are. When you've achieved and abused such high levels of broken design, you can finally call yourself a true strategic master of Necromancy. Heroes of Magic 2. The game is still absolutely worth playing. It is dirt cheap on good old games, and in this day and age, even a potato clock can run the game. If you want a fair and balanced strategy game, don't play it. If you want to ambush leprechauns for their lunch money, redistribute wealth to the masses, only to murder the masses later, and cheese your way to victory, then this is the game for you. I give it three out of four genies because nice. I don't have the extra gemstone to hire the last one. Thoroughly recommended. Go play it. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of a Merchants <laughs> Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. A huge thanks to one member of a guild in particular, since he somehow managed to get me a signed copy of a Heroes Live Orchestra CD wow. and a nice HP keyboard, which he <laughs> optimized for me in case I ever ever decide to play a league again. Mm. Thank you, fam. <laughs> You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. And now, it's time to violate copyright. Enjoy. <laughs> See, because of the whole OGL thing that was going on, right, I went back to play both uh, Divinity and uh, um, Path of the Righteous. And the first quote that he said there of victory belonging to those with the most broken spell also do apply in those games. So, yeah, pretty freaking fun review. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and subscribe to Sefzi Touch if you haven't already. And of course, like the video if you liked it. Come back to watch some more reactions. And we shall have a wonderful evening. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Got back, it's on back, it's on riding around in a coupe. I take your beat right from you.